All the cells and organisms can be grouped into two classes which differ in the mechanism of extracting energy for their own metabolism. They are autotrophs and heterotrophs. In the first class autotrophs, carbon dioxide and water are transformed by the process of photosynthesis into elementary organic molecules such as glucose and from which more complex molecules are made. In the second class heterotrophs, they extract energy from different nutrient molecules such as carbohydrates, fats and proteins which are prepared by or which are synthesized by autotrophs. They release the energy from these fuel molecules by the combustion with oxygen which is present in the atmosphere, the process which is known as aerobic respiration and ultimately it is the release of carbon dioxide and water from these molecules completes the cycle. Now, the energy transformation in cells is done by two transducing systems. That means, transducing system means the systems which are helpful in the energy transformations. They are represented by chloroplasts and mitochondria. In fact, these chloroplasts and mitochondria they act in opposite directions. Chloroplasts present in plant cells have the ability to extract energy from the sunlight and transform it into chemical energy. On the other hand, mitochondria which are known as the power plants, they release the energy which are preserved in the fuel molecules by combustion with oxygen. The main function of chloroplasts is the photosynthesis whereas, that of mitochondria is oxidative phosphorylation. Photosynthesis is antagonic reaction meaning it consumes energy whereas, oxidative phosphorylation is exergonic reaction that means, it releases the energy. Now, if we see the structure of mitochondria, this mitochondria it is in 1894 Altman has discovered the mitochondria. He also had predicted the association of this mitochondria with that of cellular oxidation. Now, under light microscope it just appears as a solid particle, but if we observe under electron microscope this mitochondria are made up of two layers that means, they are double layered structures. Now, this outer membrane it is a continuous membrane and it covers the entire organelle. And this uh, if you see the structure of this outer membrane, it resembles that of the membrane of plasma lemma or endoplasmic reticulum. That means, it consists of uh, protein layer and lipid layer. This is 6 Armstrong's in thickness. Now, this presence of this membrane outer membrane it separates this mitochondria from cytosol. Now, another membrane that is the inner membrane this is present from the distance of 6 to 8 nanometers from the outer membrane. Now, this inner membrane also has two sides that is the C side and the M side the C side means it is the cytosol side and the M side is the matrix side. Now, this inner membrane it covers a lumen of the mitochondria. Now, this lumen is known as the matrix. Now, this inner membrane also sends some finger like processes into the lumen of mitochondria and these are known as the cristae. These septae are not uh, continuous, hence they do not divide the matrix into different chambers. Now, inside this because of the presence of this membrane the mitochondria is divided into two chambers, the outer chamber and the inner chamber. The outer chamber is in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, the inner chamber is covered by the inner membrane which we have already called
called it as a matrix. Now, this matrix is filled by a dense proteinaceous substance. We also find the presence of some granules in this matrix which are associated with the they are sites for the magnesium and calcium molecules. Now, we also find some thread like processes in this matrix. Apart from that, we see the circular DNA which is the characteristic feature of the mitochondria. Now, if we observe this inner membrane, the structure of the inner membrane on the M side that means, on the matrix side you find the presence of knob like structures. They are known as the elementary particles or F n particles or ETPs. Now, the structure of these elementary particles if you observe they are made up of three pieces the base and the stock and the head region. Now, this head like structure is attached to the membrane with the help of this stock which is 50 Armstrongs in length and this head is 100 Armstrongs in diameter and these particles are placed at equi distance on this membrane. Now, here in the head we see the ATPase enzyme present. Now, it is very interesting because here in these heads we see the presence of the respiratory chain. Now, here in this respiratory chain it is made up of many complexes that means, it is consisting of the electron carriers which are divided into complexes. We call them as complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. Complex 1 contains flavoproteins of NADH dehydrogenase receives hydrogen from NADH. Complex 2 contains the flavoproteins of SDH succinic dehydrogenase and receives hydrogen from SDH. Complex 3 contains cytochrome B and C 1 and complex 4 contains cytochrome A 1 and A 3. Complexes are connected by ubiquinone. Ubiquinone connects complexes 1, 2 and 3 whereas, cytochrome c connects complexes 3 and 4. Now, in fact, the internal conformation of mitochondria dramatically changes in two situations. Now, if the ADP concentration outside the medium is less, then we see the mitochondria in orthodox state. That means, here the matrix of mitochondria completely occupies the internal space. That means, in this situation we will not see the outer chamber that is known as the orthodox state. Supposing in this condition if ADP is added to the medium immediately we can observe the constriction of the lumen and then the appearance of the outer chamber that is known as the condensed state. Now, this state is the active phosphorylating state. Now, this reveals that now during this oxidative phosphorylation. So, not only the ATP molecules are produced, but also water molecules are liberated which fills the outer chamber. Now, here in this uh, uh, mitochondria we see nearly more than 70 enzymes and coenzymes present which are helpful in the oxidative phosphorylation that is in the Krebs cycle and electron transport system. Now, let us see the enzymes which are present in the outer membrane, inner membrane and also in the matrix. Enzymes of the outer membrane of mitochondria, monoamine oxidase, NADH cytochrome reductase, fatty acid activating enzymes and enzymes of the outer chamber of mitochondria, adenylate kinase, nucleoside diphosphokinase and enzymes of the inner membrane of mitochondria, respiratory chain enzymes, cytochromes, flavoproteins and dehydrogenases, ATP synthetase, 
carnitine fatty acids and acyl transferases, enzymes of matrix, they include the enzymes of Krebs cycle and fatty acids, malate dehydrogenase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, fumarase, acotinase, citrate synthetase, beta oxidation enzymes. The mitochondria they function to liberate high energy molecules known as the ATPs adenosine triphosphate hence they are also known as the power plants of the cell. The chemical or potential energy of the foodstuffs they are locked in the covalent bonds of the atoms of a molecule. Now for example, if a normal chemical bond is hydrolyzed then 3000 calories of energy is released. Now, if you take a mole of glucose in the bonds between carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, they have 686,000 calories of energy and this enormous energy is not released suddenly in the cell, but it is made available in a controlled and stepwise manner. And this energy may be utilized by the cell to synthesize new nutrient molecules such as carbohydrates, fatty acids and amino acids etcetera and uh, to do some mechanical work such as uh, uh, cell division, cyclosis and uh, muscle contraction or for cell secretion or to maintain the membrane potential in nerve conduction etcetera. So, but in all these cases the energy which is liberated or transformed into chemical energy and to different uh, forms of energy. The common link in all these transformations is the presence of ATP molecule adenosine triphosphate molecule. Now, its most significant characteristic feature is it has got two high potential terminal bonds. The release of any one of these bonds will release 7300 calories of energy. Now, if we compare this with that of any normal chemical bond where we get only 3000 calories of energy. So, this enables the cells to preserve enormous energy in a very small place. Glycolysis which is the first step in the degradation of fuel molecules, it is a anaerobic degradation process that means, it does not require any oxygen for the glycolysis, it takes place in the cytoplasm. Now, from each molecule of glucose, it undergoes some series of reactions and ultimately it releases two molecules of pyruvate and two molecules of ATP and hydrogen molecules. So, in the glycolysis, the end product of the glycolysis is the pyruvate. The fate of pyruvate molecule which is the end product of the glycolysis depends upon the availability of the oxygen. Under anaerobic conditions, the pyruvate becomes lactate and enters into the muscle cell. Under aerobic conditions, it enters into the mitochondria and using oxidative decarboxylation, oxidative phosphorylation involving Krebs cycle and electron transport system releases 34 molecules of ATP which is almost 17 times more than that of the glycolysis. Now, what is this oxidative decarboxylation? In oxidative decarboxylation, the pyruvic acid which is the end product of the uh, glycolysis, they enter into the Krebs cycle. Here they undergo oxidative decarboxylation that is the removal of carboxylic group and they produce two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A and four molecules of hydrogen which are accepted by NADH and they pass through the electron transport system ETS and ultimately liberating the ATP molecules. Oxidative phosphorylation includes the oxidation of acetyl CoA through Krebs cycle and the phosphorylation of ADP into ATP through the ETS electron transport system or the respiratory chain. The Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondrial matrix 
In fact, this is the first step in the degradatory process of fuel molecules. The acetyl CoA produced passes through series of reactions and producing carbon dioxide molecules and hydrogen molecules. Now, the first step of the Krebs cycle starts by the condensation of acetyl coenzyme A with that of the oxaloacetic acid. The oxaloacetic acid consisting of 4 carbon molecules. Now, by this condensation produces the citric acid having 6 carbon molecules. Now, after that different reactions takes place with the different dehydrogenases and forming the succinic acid. From citric acid, cis aconitic acid, isocitric acid, oxalosuccinic acid, alpha ketoglutaric acid and intermediate unstable compound to succinic acid. Now, in this process it liberates carbon dioxide molecules and from succinic acid again it converts itself into fumaric acid and malic acid ultimately producing oxaloacetic acid to continue the cycle. In fact, from each molecule we have two complete cycles taking place. Now, ultimately here we can see the liberation of two molecules of carbon dioxide and four pairs of hydrogens are released. These hydrogens are accepted by either nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or flavine dinucleotide and they pass through the electron transport system ultimately liberating oxygen and water molecule. Now, this electron flow depends upon the redox potential. Now, here three sites have been identified that is complex 1, complex 2 and complex 3 where the release of energy is sufficient to produce ATP molecules. For every pair of electron transferred from NADH to oxygen three pairs of protons are transferred across the membrane. In terms of ATP production from NADH we get three pairs of ATP whereas, the FADH which transfers the protons to ubiquinone releases two molecules of ATP. Now, apart from synthesizing ATP the mitochondria also functions in the formation of uh, sperms. When the sperms are developed from spermatids, mitochondria forms the egg cell filament. Not only this, mitochondria also helps in the formation of yolk in ovum. Now, so far we have seen the functions of mitochondria. Now, it is interesting to note that this number of mitochondria varies uh, depending upon the function of the cell. Now, if, if we take the normal liver cell, the number of mitochondria may vary from 1000 to 1600s, whereas in oocyte it may go up to 3 lakhs. So, finally, let us once again summarize what we have learnt about mitochondria in this lesson. Altman first discovered these cell inclusions and call them bioplasts. Later, these were named as mitochondria by Benda. Mitochondria, the powerhouses of cells, are cylindrical, double membrane structures of variable size and shape. The mitochondria has smooth outer membrane, and the inner membrane is thrown into a number of folds called cristae and central matrix. The cristae bear elementary particles. Mitochondrial matrix contains circular DNA, RNA, ribosomes and all the enzymes of tricarboxylic or Krebs cycle. 
the elementary particles possesses an electron transport system of enzymes and coenzymes and generates high energy yielding ATP molecules. The main function of mitochondria is ATP synthesis through oxidative phosphorylation.